They cut me off. Look, it about this joke, this YouTube that I watch <laughs> early on, whenever his connection would go out, he does like some pro black um content. So whenever connections would go out, he would say the white man got him. <laughs> <laughs> so every time somebody connection go out online or something, I always think about that in the back of my head. I just laugh. Especially if it's um you now sometimes you see people online and they, they feel like Whatever they talking about, like don't nobody want nobody to hear, so they couldn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they uh uh, uh well, we can't have that. <laughs> mm. But um, but yes, yeah, so what were we talking about? I, I forgot. Shit, goddamn, your ass was talking about some smart ass shit. Like oh no, you talking about some oh, smart change I think you're talking about the, um, the the things that we can purchase that we have oh, to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So the that's paper, what the paper said. plates and stuff. So. Yes, yeah, so that's what Containers 2020 is all about. Um, you know, ceramic stuff too, of course, like everything that people just purchase often. We should think about at least examining the opportunity because we know people need it and we know people are going to buy it, you know. Right. So I think that would be a great way to start. And so I know for me, I'm able to help out as far as, you know, the sourcing and the transportation aspect of it. And once again, help flesh out what would be a op good opportunity and why, you know? Right. And so then I would need people who say, okay, well, I think this is an opportunity that I'll become a distributor, you know? And so right. it'd be good. I think it'd be good, but that's one way people can sort of put their money where their mouth is as far as, once again, group economics is concerned. So, We'll see, but yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds good. It look like you know, it sounds very well thought out and then well put together. You know, I don't expect nothing less from you, so I already know you're gonna. Be I'm excited about it. I'm excited. We're gonna we're gonna make it happen. Um, especially now that things are starting to open back up. Yeah, for sure. So let's see. I got another question for you. Okay. So you said um, people do not know they can do something. Well, I guess I wrote this in reply to something you said. You were talking about earlier, people scared to sort of take the plunge mm -hmm. and do some type of business on their own. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say, sometimes I also think people need permission, in a sense, which sounds crazy, right? It sounds mm -hmm. crazy. But I think sometimes it takes, you know, people like you or people like me who, you know, maybe taking baby steps or what seems like baby steps, you know, at that time to come here now where we are today and go back to people and say, hey, this is how it is, blah, blah. I think that will wake something up in people because sometimes people just don't know that they can do something different, you know. Yeah. They think just the, the, whatever they're doing day in and day out is what they have to do. But even small steps, I'm a, I'm a huge supporter of looking at any progress is progress, you know? Like, I, I watch a YouTuber who gives a bit of economic advice. And so she always mentions that, <clears throat> you know, we don't have enough spending power to achieve certain things. And I hear her. I hear her on, on some of those points. But because you can get, you can get, a, you can get less. And it, even though it's less, you should get that. You know what I mean? Not that you should settle for that. Mm -hmm. But you can always try. You know, if if you can get, let's say, for example, I'm trying to use some numbers. I don't even know if I'm gonna say this right. Let's say you're you're trying out of ten, you want to get five, right? You can get five if you participate. Mm -hmm. But if someone has psyched you out to say, okay, well, you know, you won't have these. If you do get ten, you won't have ten except for two weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, don't think about that. Don't think about those things because one thing about business and money, you know, no 
no new, I'll say new money is created in a sense, like new value is created, but it shifts. So when one thing increases, another thing decreases, you know? Yeah. So that's what we have to think about when we think economically. Like whatever we began to group purchase together, we will also see a decrease in that same spend from another place and, and markets will sort of readjust, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, once again, but if we look at it, if we take it in small steps and people aren't afraid to take those small steps, then, you know, a lot of small steps equal a big step, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of, I think, how we have to look at it. Yeah. Um, so what, was the, what was the question? <laughs> oh, I was asking you, um, well, I thought I was asking you a question, but I was actually <laughs> talking you said earlier. Oh, well, I guess to kind of piggyback on what you said, I think it has everything um, to do with the mindset, and I think it has everything to do with um, environment, and I, ha I think it has everything to do with what you decide to do to not be in the environment, even when you're in the environment. You know what I'm saying? So like you said, if you think you can get 10, right, or 10 is the limit, mm. and you say, all right, I'm going to settle for five because that's why I see everybody I see doing this shit, they hit a five. You know what I'm saying? If you put that in your mind, then yeah, you want to go hit a five. But if you say, damn, 10 is the highest, I'm going for 10. And even if you don't get 10, I can guarantee you ain't going to get five. You probably get eight. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. right. So right. I just feel like it has everything to do with like your mindset and just kind of wanting more and being able to expand outside of your beliefs, even when you don't, you don't see it right now. Mm -hmm. So I, did we just kind of take where we came from, um, for example, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. are want to leave, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They want better. They want to do it, but they're not putting the action behind it. You know, they're, yeah. they'll call up their homegirls and be like, hey, you know, I want to move here, here, here. And I'm like, girl, no, everybody do this, da, 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 da. But <laughs> that person that you are talking to aren't where you want to be either. So right. you just, you just using them as comfort. You know what I mean? But I think I wrote some Ace of I was like, never take advice from somebody you want to trade positions from. I wasn't saying that is, and don't take, don't listen to people and don't, you know, listen to their wisdom and stuff. Cause a lot of people got some good wisdom, but right. don't call nobody and be like, Hey, you know, what you think about me moving to Atlanta? That person never moved to Atlanta. Matter of fact, that person, you know, still on section eight and ain't got nothing going for themselves. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean. Don't take advice from nobody you want to trade <laughs> positions with. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just that on that. I feel you. I feel you. And um, even with, you know, I think people have to train their ears to also find what motivates you. You know, like if you see a person, sometimes, like you said, people will put dirt on your name and give you advice all, all at the same, in the same conversation. You know what I mean? Or... You know, people will give you bad advice and give you good advice in the same conversation. Right. So, you know, it's about sort of looking at what can you use moving forward. Um, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Now, are you, do you have any mentors or um, are you mentoring anybody? I do. So uh, I like, I, I like mentors that, um, well, I have some mentors that I don't see every day, but um, I listen to Robert Kiyosaki a lot. I love him. <laughs> Um, of course, Coach Stormy Wellington, I listen to her a lot. Um, I like a lot of different books, so I, I guess a book can be my mentor. I like a lot of different books. I read all, all, all the time. Right. And yeah, like, I guess, that, I guess those would be like my mentors. Somebody, the token said people will rub their fear off on you. Exactly. People really, really, people will behave in fear a lot, especially if you know, you make someone feel insecure. And like, I'm, I'm speaking in terms of like business or even work environment, things like that, or forced relations in a sense, you know? Right. Sometimes if you create an insecurity in someone else, you know, once again, I think insecurities come from fear, right? They're like rooted in some type of fear. And people will treat you a certain way or do things to you and try to rub that off on you. That's definitely true. Do you think they do it because I was just thinking, do you think they do it because they don't they want to hold you back or do you think they do it because 
of just their own type of like why why do you think you do that? <laughs> Let me see. A situation I'm thinking about. Let me think. Why did that happen to me? Um, I think is I think they do want to hold you back because they're like, man, I can't. Like, if I give you this this support, or if I, you know, motivate you a little bit more, you know, what I'm saying you're gonna you're gonna shoot up. Sometimes, sometimes. Um, in the situation I was in that I'm thinking about specifically, yeah, but like, just I'll tell you, I was thinking about something else too. But I'm gonna finish this first point. Okay. They, sometimes it's innocent, you know, they just may not understand, but we'll come back to that. But there are definitely some people who, you know, are looking at things and saying, hey, I don't necessarily like this person personally, so I'm not going to be their cheerleader, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we can't necessarily get discouraged by that, but we also have to hold people accountable. And now this will be a segue into, I guess, what I was thinking about. I was telling a friend of mine yesterday that, you know, you would think, like, if, if you or I got on Facebook right now and mm -hmm. shared, I don't know, something like most things, you know, you can command quite a large amount of likes or impressions or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Versus if you say, hey, I'm selling this product or, hey, I have this, this thing that's money related. People will like completely like go past it. You yes. Know? <laughs> yes. And so I think we also have to hold each other accountable, you know, in a nice way, of course, because if people aren't interested. Sometimes they're just simply not interested. But I don't, I feel like sometimes we're afraid to engage, you right. know, in commerce. Right. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Right. Right. Or even if you don't engage, I always tell people in a in a society of clicks, right? Like clicks have like monetary value at this point, right? In a society of clicks, if you can give clicks away for free, why not? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like the amount of the amount of like I think about it sort of like a wind. The amount of up like whip that would happen just if you know people from here began to operate within like the limits of the society we live in with clicks mm -hmm. everybody would sort of be lifted up in that way you know because who's to say it's going to be this way in five years or ten years because you know the internet is getting like a bit weird compared to how it was even five years ago you know there are more restrictions and things right. like that i don't support but we'll get into that i guess another day <laughs> but um but yeah, I was thinking about that because I shared, you know, this, I was saying, hey, if you know any entrepreneurs or any business folk, let them know that I'm interviewing people mm -hmm. and you know, we can make some things happen. I didn't even and, see that post. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, but I posted it. I know quite a few people did see it. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of, I only had like one person, I think, that responded. But I also put this in multiple groups. Now I think it can be a little weird, like on your per on your personal Facebook page, but yeah. Facebook as a platform in general, like if you've ever tried to do marketing in groups, it can get very weird, and then it just doesn't make a lot of sense because you would think if you can get a message in front of you know twenty thousand people that's in a group, if the person is nice enough to even let you post in the group, <laughs> you know if you can get right. if you got twenty thousand people in this group. And you get like no likes. It's just weird. It's a, it's a weird dynamic. Not that even you know people. I guess sometimes just aren't active in certain groups. You know, because I mean, yeah, I'm not really like a big group person, but I always try to support. You know, if I can, if I see a post, you know, if it's not stupid, I'll share it. You know, because like like you said, it's free. I'm gonna like it. I'm gonna comment. If you look yeah, good, sure. I'm gonna say, damn, you looking good. You know, I'm gonna give you that. You, you know what I'm saying? You're saying for the internet, that's it, right? Exactly. Why am I gonna <laughs> scroll on your page and not say nothing? Like that's dumb. Like Right, right. I agree. Um let's see. So ask me some questions. No, this is my interview. Ask me it, questions. It, okay, okay, I ask you more questions. <laughs> so, what's next for you? What's next for you? You you want me to tell you what's next for me? Yes. What's next for me? Okay. So for number one, I'm gonna have the biggest. I'm gonna have the biggest TLC team on the Gulf Coast. That's next. Okay. I'm giving me a house in the next six months. That's next. 
All right. right. Um, I'm going. I'm a. I'm a at least be making ten thousand a week. That's next. All, All right. right. You know what I mean. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm just. I'm just. I'm gonna keep winning, and I'm gonna keep doing what I gotta do, and I'm gonna wake up, and I'm a. Not only that's not, that's next for me, but it's next for everybody that's around me. That's that's next right. for everybody that's attached to me with good energy. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Because energy can't be destroyed; they're gonna be transferred. So I know if God got some good stuff. Exactly. In uh huh. He got some good for everybody that's attached to me. So I'm definitely I'm in my winning season because I expect less. Mm -hmm. I expect nothing less than being a winner right now. So it just is what it is. So all things winning, moving forward. That's that's what's next. Well, you you are a winner. You definitely doing your thing. Uh, like I said, seeing your post, I've seen you know the growth even in the way that you do things. And it's so funny to see other entrepreneurs because <laughs> you, know, you see like everybody's sort of getting it together. But one thing I think that's encouraging is most entrepreneurs when when they're older, they don't really regret it. You know, we just have to be smart enough to also put back and save and all those kinds of things when we're doing our business, you know? Right. But um yeah, well definitely don't stop what you're doing. Cause I'm I'm inspired. I think other people are inspired, Thank and so you know, go forth and keep conquering these motherfuckers. Hell yeah, <laughs> keep my foot on my neck. And that's why I tell people I'm not in competition with nobody but myself from yesterday. So right, right, right. Yes, like when you wake up in the morning and you decide to be better than you was the day before, you can only get better. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you this. So I'm looking into once again with the whole containers thing that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find opportunities for imports from Western African countries because you know it's just across it's just across the the ocean from us. So I didn't know that. Huh? I didn't know that. Yes, you did. Of I course. did it. <laughs> you <a> straight back. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking, what can I import now? Part of me, I'm like, okay, do I want Man, CBD? To CBD. See, you know, they don't have that there, though. Get some group. CBD. Whatever you, wherever you got to get it from, get some CBD. CBD is going to be a $22 billion industry within the next year. So, hey, India. Um, so, CBD. Uh -huh. CBD. I love you, India. I know. Hey, India. We love you, guy. Yeah, we just on here talking about um, business. All her ventures. And catching up a little bit. Yeah, he interviewing me. He wanted me to ask him some questions, but I she told me she said no. She said this is about my... me right now. He <laughs> wants to interview me. So. <laughs> okay, so let, I got another question for you. Okay. What's a recent lesson that you've learned in business? Or I also give me two lessons you've learned in business. One, I want it to be like a social lesson, like like something that has to do with like interpersonal relationships, whether it's somebody that worked for you or, you know, someone you worked for or, you know, people on your team, colleagues, whatever, um, or even customers. Okay. So I want you to tell me that. I also want you to tell me. Um, this interview hard. I got to think. Okay. okay. Well, let's start with that No, question. no, go ahead. Go ahead. What's the second question? And the second question will be, um, I guess, what other location would you like to take over? Okay. So a social lesson. Okay. So I put it to you like this. You know how, um, you know, network marketing or whatever type of thing, whatever job that you work in, you know, you either are part of a team or you may work individually, but nine times out of 10, you are part of a team. Mm -hmm. What I've learned is that even though you are a team, and even though you may be, you know, a link to this chain, you can't be the weakest link. You know what I'm saying? And when people right. aren't doing and people aren't moving and people aren't shifting how you want them to shift, don't worry about it. Just keep going and stay focused on what you're trying to go because you may be in the middle of the chain, but God might want you to be the head of the chain. So right. you just got to, instead of saying, oh, man, I quit, you know what I'm saying? This team fucking suck, da 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 or, you know, I hate, you know, coming to this job and da-da-da. You got to you gotta go there for you and you got to work there for you and you got to move in the spirit of excellence every mm -hmm. time you do what you do. You know what I mean? Whether you see results today or do you see results tomorrow. 
And that is what I learned, just to stay focused and, you know, do me regardless of what everybody else doing around me. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, you know, I told one of my friends um, about your music. Yeah. And she, she actually rapped as well. Okay. And I'm going to get her on it. She's going to do an interview as well. Okay. We have a company. And I said once we do one of those panels, I'm pretty sure you guys will eventually meet. Okay. Uh -huh, but I just thought about that. I was going to ask you, are you working on any music ventures as well? Or or even, you know, like selling voiceovers and things like that? No, right now I put music to the side. Um, last year I was putting a lot of eggs in, one, in different baskets and I was getting uh -huh. nothing done. I was just busy all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I just came to the realization like uh, music is a passion for me and music is a gift. That uh -huh. can never be taken away. So no matter if I'm focusing on it right now or if I decide to pick it back up later, I can do that. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm just serving what serves me at this time in my life right now. And then, you know, who knows? I might pick music back up or, you know, ain't nothing to go in the studio and drop some fire shit. You know, it ain't nothing to turn the beat on. <laughs> it ain't nothing to get a pop. So I'm just like, you know, what, what, where am I trying to go right now? So, yeah. Yeah. Who you listening to right now? Ooh. You know, I'm a variety type of person, you know, but mm -hmm. I don't know this, I don't know what kind of, what the name is music, is it Afro, African music or Afro music, uh, Afro like the Vito and stuff like that? Afro like, music, probably, maybe that's yeah, the new term. Like that. You know, I'm still, I still for Katrina, the old shit, the new shit, right, right, Trina right, right. Come out with. I'm rocking with Trina, Kevin Gates, Kevin Gates, I connect with him on a spiritual level. Oh yeah, man! I feel his music in my soul. When it turn on, I just he get in my body. He just be like, man. <laughs> okay. So Kevin Gates, and you know I listen to Money Bag Yo here and there. Meg, she cool, she cool, but I ain't you know. So now, who, who are you listening to that you feel like? I won't say you don't like their music, but you just not you not on that wave, you know? Nobody. Everything I'm connected to, I, I got to be on that way. I feel that. I feel that. Um, as far as music, as far as hip hop, I don't know. I, I think I'm listening to a lot of old stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, I let YouTube pick sometimes. Like, you know, things will come up recommended. Like, I listen to some. Okay. Recently, as far as hip hop is concerned, I've been listening to a lot of, like, slowed and reverbed music. I really enjoy that. Really? Yes, I like it. I it's like, like it. copy screw stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, I, I can't do that. <laughs> That's annoying. I do. I, do. I love it. I love really? it. I like, it. like just put it on, kind of as like ambiance or something. I like it. Do you still be dancing? Like, like twirling and stuff. Yeah. No, but I do want to start a team here in Miami. Do an eight count. <laughs> right now. I am not gonna do no A count. <laughs> Alexa, play. Come on, Isaiah. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. I got you. That's a good time to No, Alexa. Stop. Tell her to play get ready. <laughs> by the temptations. Alexa. Play get ready by the temptations. Get ready by the temptations from Spotify. Come on. Come on, Isaiah. <laughs> I love the way you move that chair. Nah, come on. No, ma'am. I said you ain't gonna do it. Uh-uh. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> look, look, but I am thinking about starting like a um uh, like a baton troop or whatnot. Just because I think I don't know if you noticed the last day. A lot of the HBCUs now no longer have time twirlers. And so I kind of want to help them replenish, you know, like, I guess, the time twirlers. <sighs> okay. So, that'll be a good thing. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be different. And also, that, that mentor aspect could be there as well. Right. Speaking of mentors, you know, I caught up with Ms. World while I was home. No, oh, you did. I did. I you did. know, I never really, like, I, I never was around Miss World. I really? Came with yeah, I came with Miss Shirley. Oh, that's so right. I, just know that's Ms. right. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I went and saw her um, while I was home. She's still doing good. And uh, she looked good. So still funny as ever. 
For real. But, but yeah, no get ready for me tonight. <laughs> Ooh. Look, but I don't, I don't want to hold you up. I really thank you, and we have to do this more often. Yeah, whenever. Just let me know. Okay, I will. I will get on your nerves. You're gonna be like, no, don't call me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Call me anyway, even if it ain't for a live. Hit me up. Okay, I will. And with the panels, I'll probably, I'll let you guys know, like, you know, the questions and things or like the topics, and then we can just get on. But, you know, there'll be different people on. Um, there'll be different people on, but, you know, I won't let it get too crazy because, I mean, also has to be people that I know will have a good dynamic because, I mean, you're not afraid to talk. I know other people who are not afraid to talk, you know, so... Gotcha. I do have some questions though. Oh, yeah, for me? Yeah, I do. So, okay. when is your birthday? July 14th. You're Leo? No, I'm a Cancer. Cancer. You're so bougie. I'm a, I'm a Cancerian. Cancerian, <laughs> okay. Um, another question. What's next for you? Besides the, you know, the supply chain stuff, like, what's, what does, what is what is what does Isaiah look like in the next like next year? What what is he gonna look next like? Next year. Next year, what will I look like? Well, I'm definitely I'm definitely going to like I have some products here that are like you see this art there? That's one of the prototypes that I'm working on for like a okay. home home goods mm -hmm. that I'm making. And so these things will be in market, mainly like online. I won't have like a storefront or anything like that. Okay. You know, they'll be available online. You'll see like more videos and stuff about them. Um, nice. And I'm looking to see once again, where can I Im begin to import from West Africa? And so now I'm at the point where I'm doing research on that. So next year, those two things will definitely be in operation because I'm thinking about okay, I won't say I'm thinking about Ideally, my plan is to okay. have three offices or three locations that I work out of. Mm -hmm. I want one in Africa. Ooh. I want one in the United States and I would like one in China. But I think I think I'm getting ready to begin to do a lot of developmental business okay. in Africa. So I wouldn't mind having an office in East Africa as well as West Africa. But this right. next this year I'm gonna be visiting West Africa a lot. To just come? yeah, you can come. Yeah, you can come. I'm, I'm gonna go to Ghana. Okay. I'm gonna go to Nigeria, and I think I'm gonna also go to probably Cameroon on this. Hopefully, on this first trip, those okay. three trips, because I need to figure out where I want to put an office and where I want to sort of um, work from. Okay. And so, I think that's like the first step. So, it, within this year, this time next year, I'll have two products launched. And we'll just leave it at that. I'll, I'll under promise and overperform. <laughs> okay. Under promise and overperform. I like that. Yes, that's the model. You know, that's what they tell you to tell clients <laughs> when you like doing projects and stuff. You under promise <laughs> and it's overperform. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, because if I tell you I can do some shit and you don't, I don't come over, you're gonna be looking real crazy. But if I am right, right, right. some shit, you're gonna be like, oh, all right. That's something that I learned from consulting too, though, that you have to, you know, you can't be afraid to tell somebody either that you don't know or that what they are requesting from you is like unreasonable, right. you know, because people will sort of have an unreasonable expectation. They feel like because they hire you, you're supposed to do some type of magic. Right. <laughs> and that's something worth that. I need to be in training. The fuck? I still need the guy. <laughs> Tell me what a coffee machine is. I need the whole right. time. Yeah, it's facts. Okay, I got another question. Okay. Um, what books are you reading or have you read? Right now, I'm reading, believe it or not, I'm reading a tarot book, which I mean, I've read it already, though, but I'm reading a tarot book. I'm also reading a Spanish book that I bought because I'm trying to learn. Read it in Spanish or are you yeah, reading it? Language book. I'm trying to learn in Spanish. Gotcha. And am I reading anything else? No, I, believe it or not, I'm not a huge book person. I don't like physical books. I don't like ebooks. I don't Audible. Yeah, I like I like audio books or I like videos. 
I, I'm gonna tell you something that's a little controversial. Okay, you know I, you, you come with that. So what's up? I believe books are a little bit obsolete, just in the sense that I think video is just more efficient. But you know, of course, I don't. I don't think people will lose the ability to read and write. You know, I don't mm -hmm. think that. But I'm a huge YouTube like junkie. But when I do read books, I never read fiction. I don't really like nonfiction. So a lot of like self help, religion, or you know stuff like that. Okay. And I read a lot of articles. I read a lot of articles online. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. You are a reader. You for you to say you don't like books. You like books a lot. <laughs> I do like books. I I do. You see my bookshelf, and that ain't even. Uh -huh. I just put this together last night. And I don't know. I need a, I need a bookshelf. Yeah, I just I put it up to, last night. And the rest of my books are over there in the, in the shelf. But because I'm working all the time, I do more of Audible. Um, uh huh. Because it's more efficient for me to wake up in the morning, and get in the shower, and listen to it versus yeah. having it physically. Um in my hand but it's a lot of books that i do have the hard copy and audible because they so fucking good mm -hmm. um, well so what you okay never mind you okay ask me more <laughs> i don't want to interrupt you <laughs> no what you was about to ask me i was gonna ask you what what books you listening to on audible right now so currently right now i'm listening to the psychology of selling okay okay um and then I'm also listening to look to the five levels of leadership. Okay. Okay. But some of my favorite books are, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I uh -huh. love um what's the name of that book? Oh, The Richest Man in Babylon. I actually have a physical copy. If you've never okay. read The Richest Man in Babylon, listen. It's good. Girl, yes. <laughs> yes. You're gonna love it's not like a hard book to read. It's like really in like story form but it teaches you a lot about like finances and managing uh -huh. your money i remember you mentioned that earlier but it, it teaches you a lot of um of good nuggets that way and i like the what is it the the seven something of highly successful people so i think it's like oh, the seven seven habits. Habits. yeah <laughs> seven habits of highly successful people i mean i got a, I got a whole <laughs> I don't know if you had that lady in high school, but I cannot remember her name. Do you remember the little red-headed older lady? She used to teach like the child, like the class with the babies. Like the fake babies. In Votech? No, 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 no. This wasn't in Votech. Well, when I had her class, well, maybe she had a class. She had a classroom in Votech and a class in like the main. What was her name? I can't remember her name. I can't remember it. But she made us read that book, the you know seven the seven habits of highly successful people. Okay. But I don't really remember. I kind of remember, but not really. Oh, you know what's a really good one? Listen. What? Outwitting the devil. Okay. Outwitting the devil is so fucking good, bro. Because it's telling you like how you know how, yo like you be telling yourself you want this, but your mind to trick yourself out of it. Right. Right. But it's teaching you how to get in control of, of that, of the inner person. That's, I know. feel that. I feel that. Um, I know sometimes if I'm like, if I'm in a flux about something, mm -hmm. you know, I totally believe, you know, you manifest the things that you think. You know, mm -hmm. so, like you said earlier, you give something energy. You know, <clears throat> but I think on that path, if you if you meditate or you know you're used to being in that that space of, you know, creativity and manifestation. And then I think you can also, just as you can give something energy, I think if it's something you've given energy, I think you can also take that energy back, you know? Exactly, and that's what it's about. Like, taking it, uh -huh. like, yeah, it's about taking it back. Listen to it, I'm telling you. Okay. I'm the devil. But um, I remember I was speaking with this friend of mine who is also just, he he's brilliant. Like, I'm talking about this guy is so motivated i mean like it's crazy crazy but you know he's he a real humble guy and so i was talking to him and his family is from well i don't know if they're from india i think you know ethnically they're from india but he grew up in mauritius which is like near madagascar which is like you know in africa but his family is ethnically indian so he's hindu so he kind of got those vibes and stuff too with the you know yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Language, you know so I was talking to him one day and I was telling him about something I was going through. 
And I, he was mentioning that when you are in that state, you should like attack that thing like in your mind, like literally like do a scenario in your mind where you're meditating constantly on that thing or creating the opposite reaction of whatever you're trying to avoid, but like actually sit down and see that in your mind for like an extended point of time where you're like playing that like that outcome over and over again or changing that situation around over and over again, you know? So say you're going through something, you sit there and imagine yourself not going through that thing, but you got to sit in it. That what you're saying? Sort of, but like it has to be a reasonable solution that will actually, that could actually get you out. So say somebody was homeless, right? But they okay. have to picture themselves inside a house that they want to be in. Or are you talking about like picturing how they will get out of their situation? Like, oh, I'm a yeah. good job. I'm picturing me getting a job. I'm picturing me. Yeah, all of that. Like okay. walking through all those steps. And I think it's sort of, I think spiritually it manifests or it opens, you know, certain gates or whatnot for these things to come in. But um, I think ultimately the point is, I think it prepares like your heart for that thing, you know? Yeah. And it, it becomes less, when you think about it, you can see it in your head, the picture gets clearer and clearer, you know, as you keep on seeing that thing dissolve or whatever. Right. And so, uh, I don't know. I, I think it just helps. But yeah, I think that's dope. Yeah, it was a good conversation with him that day. And I know he bought that life. <laughs> what does he what does he do? He is he do a lot, but he's an engineer. okay, he's an engineer by trade. Like his classical education is like in, he's a in, electrical engineer, I think. Okay. Then he went on. You know what's crazy? I talk to a lot of electrical engineers on a day to day because I work for a software SaaS company. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, so we um we're actually selling them a software that helps them design um faster and more efficient so okay. shit, okay. you know hey tell them to hit me up because the <laughs> company is everywhere <laughs> we may be able to you know what software is it you can't speak on it huh i say what software is it or you can't speak on it no i can't no, it's a um, software called evolve and basically what it is is works in, inside of a platform called revit so usually when you um are a designer you either work inside cadmap or you uh work inside of revit and yeah. it's just like one of those design tools that helps you kind of put everything together. So, um, so yeah. So basically, the software kind of works as like, like a Google Docs or on like some, like on some extra shit to where like you don't have to physically design it. I already come with like preloaded um, tools, and it helps you like move different things at one time. And all of your, um, all of everybody can kind of work together like a Google Docs platform inside of their Revit. So it basically takes whatever you're working in, if you're working in Revit, and makes it on some whole extra shift when you say from going from 40 hours to like eight. Okay, yeah. Okay, I see. That's what's up. Yeah. So it's kind of like a way for people to work on the Project. multiple things at the same time. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can see why people would like that. He's a he got he's an electrical engineer. Then he went to graduate school for I want to say like sustainability, something along those lines. Okay. But then he also has like like the certifications that most people want. He has his CMP. You okay. know, I'm sure I'm sure you're familiar with that. He has his green belt and his master black belt for Six Sigma. And also now he's in graduate school again at Yale to get his MBA. Okay. And I was just like, you know, I'm so proud of him. But once again, that's when I say motivated, like he's just that kind of guy. Oh, like, the, I remember like the first time I heard him talk about something because we joined a fraternity um, my freshman year. That's a, another story too, but we were like fraternity brothers in a sense. And the first speech he gave when he was like, hey, you know, I think we, we should do these types of projects and whatnot. It was like way over what we were thinking about, like at that time. You know, it was, yeah. it's, it's crazy. but he's always been a guy. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, let's see, I don't have anything else, but I mean, we can just keep chatting if you want. Um, I don't think I have no more questions either. Okay. 
it has been wonderful. And I will be reaching out. And if you want to watch tomorrow, no, on Thursday, I have another interview. Okay. That would be nice. So you get a chance to see some other people. And as yeah, I sure. do, you know, once again, we'll put a panel together. And, you know, we can talk about some fun stuff and even some serious stuff. Here you give your social commentary. <laughs> yeah, for real. You like, you like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Okay. Well, you're a good stuff. So um, I'll be I'll be letting you know, but I'll be calling you, and you got my number. I'll send you a text message as well. For sure. Thanks, Isaiah. It was nice talking Thank to you. you. And I'm gonna share this to the group, my group that I manage on Facebook, and I'll share it to my page too. Okay. Cool. All right. Mm. All right. Good night. Uh, and thank you. Oh, and don't forget to get your products. Oh, I won't. I got you. I'm gonna buy one because I mean I need liquid vitamin anyway. So send me the link. I do that. Okay. All right. Peace. Good night. Thank y'all for watching. Stay tuned. We have another interview coming up. And all of these are business interviews. And sometimes we'll do like social panels as well. But this is all about Containers 2020, which is my initiative. You guys can, you know, take a look at the page so you can learn a bit more about Containers 2020. But once again, this is about putting our, our philosophies about group economics actually to work. So we're trying to see how many containers of goods can we import. And, you know, we can discuss what countries you're interested in and how that looks and budgets and all that as, as well as commodities so stay tuned and you guys have a great night talk to you soon bye-bye